Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is no contact. She tried to come back. Is it a good idea? Well, I've got an email. This guy is actually new to my work. He says he just discovered, came across my work in August. And so we're, now this is November 2nd, so he's been following me for a couple of months. And like a lot of guys, probably 80, 90% of the people that come to me, they had a breakup, trying to figure out what the hell happened. And here they are. So the interesting thing is he wrote this email. He's excited because, hey, the no contact worked. But this email just brings up a lot of good points. So this guy was in a relationship with his girlfriend. And I don't, I can't remember how long he said. I'm sure when we go through the email. But anyways, he's in a relationship with his girlfriend. Our girlfriend has a male friend. And this helpful male friend was basically trying to create problems between her and her boyfriend, the guy that, that wrote the email. And so she goes through his phone and I guess some girls had sent him videos on TikTok. And because the, the friend is going, oh, your boyfriend's definitely cheating on you. And so what happened was she accused him of cheating and then she broke up with him. And so typically, somebody that's insecure and accuses you of cheating, I mean, this girl, you'll see as we go through it, has all the hallmarks of somebody who's disloyal and dishonest. So she's hanging out with this friend who basically is trying to get into her pants, convinces her that her boyfriend's lying and cheating to her. She accuses him of it, dumps him, and then gets together with this new guy. And then she, he becomes her boyfriend. A few months go by, she starts reaching out to this guy again, and uh, it's just... This is a great email because it's what you're really looking for, especially in the vetting process. If you're looking for a long-term exclusive monogamous relationship, you got to make sure the person you're with values it. They don't have male orbiters that they're hanging out with that are trying to get into their pants when you're not around. Exactly like what happened in this particular situation. But, I mean, at the end of the day, this other friend actually did this guy who wrote the email a favor because now he knows that his chick belongs to the streets. So let's go through his email. He says, Hi, Coach Corey. I discovered your videos and book in August right after I went through a breakup. To make a long story short, my ex began starting fights with me over the summer. That's typically what women do to try to cause a breakup. They try to make things so unpleasant and make it so unpleasant to be with them that you end up dumping them. And then when you don't, they end up dumping you. But by the time that happens, usually their feelings are totally gone, like the email that I did just recently. We're just talking about how women break up with a guy after the feelings are gone. <clears throat> so you can see, obviously, the influence of this male orbiter that she's hanging out with is not being helpful because he's filling her head full of all these ideas because he's trying to get her to break up with her boyfriend, which he was able to successfully do. He says, and this con concluded with her accusing me of cheating and she left me. Come to find out, because he didn't even know what was going on, this male friend she knew from high school who was hitting on her and giving her advice. <laughs> Say he's just a friend. <laughs> totally harmless friend from high school. We've had some spirited debates with the girls, especially Erica, about this topic because she's got several male friends and she was adamantly believed that, oh, they they don't want to just sleep with me. That's not why they're still friends with me. I was like, uh-huh. Pick up the phone and call one of these dudes. He'll drop what he's doing and haul ass to be with you if you tell him you're ready to sleep with him. She's coming around to reality slowly, but surely. We're getting her there. He says she mentioned to him during these fights and told me he was making sexual comments and asking her to hook up. So... One of the things that Doc, the late great Doc Love used to say was that women don't lie and men don't listen. And so when she says things like this, she's basically telling you, hey, here's your replacement. Rubbing it in your, just letting you know. Full disclosure, but kind of in a, oh, he's just a friend. He's a helpful friend. Give me advice. Good advice. <laughs> she ended up going, <clears throat> she ended up going through my phone based on his advice and she found messages on TikTok when I was being sent videos. Her friend 
told her, <clears throat> that is me talking to other girls. Well, I don't really know the context of these videos. doesn't really elaborate. The friend just goes, see, ha ha, I told you. He's cheating on you. During this time, I told her what he was trying to do, and she didn't believe me. The fact that she believes this friend over her boyfriend, not a good way. I would say probably at that time her interest was low anyways, and so she was looking for a way out. She wasn't happy. Because if she was head over heels in love with this guy, that wouldn't have happened. But this, is, at the end of the day, this is a good thing for the guy who wrote the email because now he knows what he's dealing with. And plus he gets to see firsthand how a liar and a cheater and a girl who monkey branches operates. He says, after we broke up, he made his move on her and didn't take no for an answer, if you know what I mean. So, in other words, he got to the promised land. That was in the first week of August. After the breakup, I went into no contact. I began watching your videos, and I have read your book eight times since then. Obviously, he's talking about 3% Man. You can read it for free at understandingrelationships.com. Just subscribe to the email newsletter. He says, after I cut her out of my life, she began to creep on my Facebook. Yet typically what you see in these situations where the ex is starting to come back is they're watching your Instagram stories, they're, they start liking your posts, they may even comment. And as I talk about in Seven Principles, get an ex back, unless they're, you know, if they say something nice to you or about you on one of your posts, just like it. Don't get in a conversation, just like it. Because the reality is if she's really into you or wants a chance, she's going to call or text you or DM you however she normally messages you. Typically, the watching your stories and liking your posts is just kind of seeing how you react, if you're cool with it, if you get upset, because she doesn't want to look like a fool. She comes back. She's trying to reduce her risk of getting rejected. He says, I began to see a random account like and then unlike my posts. I looked at the account and noticed it had been created a week prior. This account was looking at my story and would like and unlike my post over a dozen times a day. Well, that's kind of unusual. This took place so much that the account showed up as number one on the people I may know. This took place for weeks until I finally blocked that account. Then she showed up on my Instagram with her real account doing the same thing. Interesting. This is where it's a scientific fact that women are more attracted to men whose feelings are unclear. And so you can imagine what this does because he's not talking to her and she's created a fake account. He blocks a fake account. Then she does it with Instagram. So she goes, when she realizes what she's doing, watching the posts and the stories and liking things, gets no response from him and she becomes a little bolder. This time she began to send friend requests to my family members and comment on my posts. So she's fishing, fishing for information trying to see if it's possible to come back. I stayed in no contact until last week when she finally reached out. The strongest negotiating position is being able to walk away and mean it. And so in this case, she lined up a replacement, started hanging out with this replacement who was interfering in the relationship and giving her bad advice because he was trying to sabotage it. He's a dirtbag, backstabbing scumbag who deserves our scorn. But it was helpful to this guy because it revealed the character flaws in his girlfriend. It's much better, better to learn this now than to go and get married or in a relationship and then have her do this when you're married and have kids and you live in a blue state. Oh, that's a bad, bad, bad way to go. She contacted a mutual friend and told her she missed me and wanted to talk to me. So what she's doing here is just feeling it out to see if he's open to talk to her or whatever. Because she doesn't, she's trying to avoid getting rejected and looking like an idiot. <clears throat> well, I mean, she already looks like an idiot for what she did, but that's on her. She told the friend that she is now in a relationship, but he doesn't listen to her. Oh, that's just too bad for her. Well, you say he's just a friend. At the advice of our mutual friend, she finally texted me. The text exchange was short. And I ultimately told her that I didn't think it was right for her to be contacting me while she was in a relationship. And if things don't work out with her current boyfriend and I'm still single, then maybe 
we can talk. Perfect answer. Right out of seven principles, get an X back. Well, she wasn't happy about that and proceeded to tell our mutual friend that she was a bitch for suggesting she contact me. She just sounds like a lovely human being. And that I'm an asshole. And that was this was that was this past Sunday. Huh. Such a lovely woman. I spent my time during no contact going to the gym and I went on a few dates, but they didn't really excite me. It takes time. This is why a lot of guys give up when they dump a girl they're not that into and go back to her. Because I didn't find anybody else. People that you really connect with, man, they don't come along very long often. And I I've been telling you guys this for years. You get one to three of those really deep, soulful connections per decade. It's not a lot. I mean, when's the last time you met a new, really close friend? I mean, that's something like almost never happens. He says, I really did and still do love my ex. However, however, I'm at the point where I don't feel the need to give her a second chance. Nice job, dude. Because she doesn't. She belongs to the streets. She's a liar and a cheater. She did exactly what she accused you of. And she allowed this moron that she's hanging out with to fill her head full of nonsense. But I would have to say, you, you're reading the book, so there's obviously some some behaviors or things you were doing that because she wasn't as attracted to you because what was going on it sounds like she was kind of forming a frankenstein boyfriend project where when she wasn't happy with you she's talking to the friend so obviously you have some work there to clean up your game but like i said all in all everything in life happens for a reason the way i look at it is what happened happened and it couldn't happen couldn't have happened any other way it was supposed to be this way because if it hadn't happened like this, like I said, you could have gone on, continued on, eventually got married, maybe had kids, and then she does this with your next door neighbor or maybe this guy or somebody else. And that's a lot much worse situation. That's way more downside than where you're at now. Here it's just, hey, she's an ex. On to the next. She hates to be alone. That's why women like this always have a guy and always have male orbiters. And if they're not happy with their current guy, she's in touch with the male orbiters. That's just how these girls operate. They're too insecure to be alone. And she is trying to monkey branch back to me. I just want to let everyone know that no contact works and women do not like to be told no. Well, at the end of the day, she blew the relationship up. And now she's getting to experience firsthand her creation. She got into a relationship with a guy that's a dirtbag and she's complaining that he doesn't listen to her. Oh, poor baby. Well, you know what? She deserves it. She brought it upon herself. She made that bed. She gets to lie in it now. So to the guy that wrote the email, good job for turning your life around. Good job for reading the book. Again, you got to read it 10, 15 times and you have to be patient, man. It might take you two, three, four years before you really meet somebody that you jive with. That's why you want to get really good at this stuff. Because if you don't and you meet somebody that knocks your socks off and you're not prepared, you'll mess it up and chase her away and chase her out of your life. And that really stinks. Those take a long time to get over. About a year, year and a half. Because when you meet somebody that stirs your soul like that, you never forget it. It hardly ever happens. And when they that slips through your fingers, that's, that's good fuel to motivate you to make changes that you know you need to make. And no contact works, but... Obviously, in this case, based upon all everything we know about this girl and how she operates, this is, this is what she does when she's not happy. She talks to other guys. And no dude wants to sleep with one eye open for the rest of his life. Simple as that. So if you got a question or a challenge, maybe you got a situation that's similar because I know it's hard when you're in these situations and your emotions are getting the best of you. It's hard, you know, Then you're listening to friends, family telling you what to do. It's really hard. And I can be that light in the darkness to lead you back to the promised land so you can – to help you make an informed and intelligent decision. I was having a, a phone session with a guy last night that – I've done a few phone sessions with him and he's been with his girlfriend about a year. And it's just a lot of suspect behavior going on. You know, She's basically behaving like a single girl, wanting to go out to nightclubs with the girls only, not want to take her boyfriend, just things like that. Going on trips with people that supposedly she's known for a long time, come to find out when he asks her about these, the friend that she's known for a long time, she can't tell her anything about him. It's like, well, that doesn't sound right. And so you got to look at what people do, not what they say. 
And some women are naive, just like I was talking about Erica. She's pretty naive when it comes to these things about the male orbiters, that they're not there just because they want to be your friend and they're okay with it. They're hoping to get another chance. And so women that entertain that, like this girl, that always have these guys around, it's you're constantly going to be wondering what she's doing, what she's up to. It's Love cannot exist where there is no trust. And if you've got somebody and you set and enforce healthy boundaries and you're in a relationship with a chick who and you tell her this is not appropriate, it's not appropriate to be doing these things, it's not appropriate when you're in a relationship to be giving out your phone number to other guys that are hitting on you and saying, oh, he's just a friend, he's just a nice guy from my, from my work, we're just friends, it's just friendly. He's married anyways. Doesn't matter. He's trying to get in your pants. And so when you have women that do that, to give out their number, that invite attention from other guys, it's like those are just, those are girls to have fun with. Those are like sex playmates, maybe occasional friends with benefits. You definitely want to wear a raincoat. <clears throat> just because it's like you ain't the first one and you certainly ain't going to be the last one in that hallway. It's like throwing a hot dog down the hallway. So if you got a question or a challenge and you'd like to get my help, go to understandingrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon.